So this is red spinel. It's lab created. I got this one from uh, one of the labs I hadn't bought material from before. I think I bought something from pretty much all the labs, Thailand, US, Russia, wherever. So this is spinel. This is, uh, this one weighs in about uh, 53 and a quarter carats. And uh, it's rather deep. I, I went to the lab and asked them for a re rather deep piece because uh, the design I want to cut has a uh, deep pavilion. So uh, we're ready to get started on a project. And now, ever heard of it? Many consumers have not, but it is a very important gemstone. In fact, it was Spinel. Spinel is the gemstone that made Ruby famous, and Ruby is often called the queen of gemstones, but that title is largely due to red Spinel. Ruby is one of the most historically significant colored gemstones, and Ruby is the main or centerpiece gemstone even in the crown jewels of the United Kingdom. That red gemstone, the big red gemstone in the front of the Imperial State Crown of the United Kingdom is called the Black Prince's Ruby. And it was named after Edward of Woodstock, aka the Black Prince. And this ruby was given to the Black Prince in the year 1367. However, surprise, the Black Prince's Ruby is not a ruby at all. It's actually red spinel. From early antiquity, ruby and spinel were considered the same. This is because red spinel and ruby look almost the same, and because spinel is often found in ruby mines, and also because both ruby and red spinel get their red color from traces of chromium, although in antiquity I don't think they knew what chromium was. So until science advanced enough to distinguish between spinel and ruby, they were thought to be the same gemstone. Until the 19th century, there was no distinction made between ruby and red spinel. Again, because they both look the same, they're both found in the same location, in the same mines. But nowadays, one way we can distinguish between spinel and ruby is by using the Mohs hardness scale. Spinel has a hardness on the Mohs scale of eight, as does topaz while ruby and sapphire, both corundum, have a hardness of 9, and diamond has a hardness of 10. Um, and I did create a video explaining the Mohs scale, so I'll link to it here if you're interested to learn more about the Mohs scale. Um, but the Mohs scale was not developed until 1822 by Frederick Mohs. So before the Mohs scale, there was really no way to distinguish between spinel and ruby. Another difference between spinel and ruby, or corundum, is that spinel is singly refractive, like a diamond. Singly refractive means that the gemstone will remain the same color in all directions. So red spinel is very transparent and has a lots of fire. Ruby, on the other hand, is doubly refractive, meaning that when light enters the stone, it will split and leave the ruby as two different colors, often a purplish red or an orangey red. And to see these different colors, you have to look at the ruby in different directions. So the top color, red spinel, has more fire and brilliance than ruby, which is another reason spinel made ruby the queen of gemstones. And yet another difference that we know today, but didn't know back then, between spinel and ruby is that although they both get their red color from traces of chromium, for ruby, it's an aluminum oxide mineral, while spinel is a magnesium oxide mineral. But again, there was no science to distinguish between the, these trace min minerals in the 1300s when the Black Prince ruby was named, or misnamed as a ruby. So spinel on its own is a beautiful gemstone, which is largely unknown to consumers and the result is an undervalued gemstone. But the price of spinel does and is continuing to rise as consumers learn more about this gemstone. So today I'm cutting a piece of lab-created spinel, and that's because large pieces of natural red spinel are extremely rare, and of course, extremely expensive. I mean, the piece I'm cutting is almost as big as the one in the, uh, the crown jewels. So, plus the design I want to try in this spinel calls for a thick stone with a deep pavilion or bottom half of the stone. And finding a piece of natural spinel with these dimensions would take a lengthy and very expensive search. So man-made spinel is what I will use today. When I ordered this piece from the uh, 
from the lab, I asked him to specifically to cut me a deep uh, piece of rough. So the width of this rough is almost the same as the, uh, the depth of the rough. And the reason is, is that this design, the spellbound design calls for a very deep pavilion. And if you look on the instructions and cutting instructions for this stone, the height to width ratio, the height of the stone to the width is 1.066, which means however wide it is, is how deep it can be. So that's why I got this piece of rough. So I'm going to cut it and see how it works out. Now to put it in our, our Ultratech machine, uh, we want the uh, lengthwise to go to correspond to the 24 and 72 teeth of our Ultratech and then the kind of the short side, uh, the 48 and 96. Normally the 96 is on top uh, when you look at your cutting instructions, but I put the 48 up on top because this uh, brass dop retention screw, if I put it on 48, it puts it at the top of my spindle. It's easier for me to reach uh, with my Allen wrench, so that's why I put it at 48. So you just, you don't have to be exact at this stage. Not a, not a big deal. So you just put the stone in. So it's pretty much 24 and 72 teeth this way and 48 and 96 the other way. Kind of like that, that's good. And tighten it up and we're ready to start cutting our red spinel. Here is the spellbound design which I'm gonna cut today. And the creator of this design, Jeff Ronimus, he can be found and reached on Facebook. So if you have any questions about his design or you just wanna see a copy, just contact him there. I have cut this design before. I really like it and I want to see how this design looks in spinel. But due to the cost of a large piece of natural spinel, I think I just want to see how it looks in man-made spinel. Okay, I finished preforming our gemstone. I used a 120 grit topper. Pretty rough lap, uh, but, but the material spinel is, is hard. Um, so it can take a 120 grit lap, no problem. It won't cause any uh, internal damage to the stone. So this is why I ordered such a deep piece of rough. You can see that these bottom facets, which should go to a center point, I'm not quite there yet. So uh, to, once I get a center point here, I'm gonna, this will bring this, these facets down even a little bit further. And so I have either just enough right now to cut the crown, because this is where the girdle will be, or I'll have to bring it in a little bit more, depending on how, how much uh, bringing that to a center point affects these facets. And again, th these corners here get cut off, so this will be up a little bit. But that's why you need a, a thick piece of rough for this design. But we're pretty well, pretty well preformed about the right length and width, about. We're almost there. So now I'll use a 600 grit uh, topper and go over the facets again. Now I haven't gone over the second set of facets uh, here on the top. Um, I'll get to those later with uh, a finer grit lap. Okay, again, this is a topper lap. These are kind of, to me, cheaper. Well, they are cheaper. Kind of not as good, but good enough at the rougher grits disposable after, you know, they wear out, just get rid of them. So, and I've been using toppers anywhere from the 100 grit range, uh, 200 grit range, 300 grit range, and this is a 600 grit. Anything finer than a 600 grit, I don't use a topper. They're, they are not perfectly flat. You just put them on a master lap. I put them on my ceramic lap, which is the flattest lap I have but they still wobble, although some cutters have told me they buy from a company that they're, they're, they're perfectly flat. I bought from that company. No, it hasn't been my experience, but they're good enough at the rougher lap level. Like I said, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't use them beyond the 600 grit level. Other people may, but for this design, uh, the Spellbound design, because it has frosted fa facets, and I'm gonna frost them at the 600 grit level. 
I'm going to use my uh, my Crystallite solid steel lap. So this is also a 600 grit lap, but it's solid steel, so the the diamond uh, is embedded on the top part, and the lap itself is you know not a topper. So Crystallite's a good brand. Uh, they make a good product. It's a lot more expensive than uh, these toppers you can buy on eBay, Amazon, Chinese made or wherever. It's a lot better product, but for the rougher laps, generally it doesn't matter. But in this case, because the 600 is, is the furthest I'm gonna go on the frost, frosted facets, I want a good, good lap. So I'm gonna use my Crystal Light solid steel disc for that. Okay, I finished polishing the bottom half of our spinel, so now I will transfer the stone and cut and polish the upper half. Okay, once I've glued the uh, the bottom part of our stone onto the top, I have to remove the top part. And the way I do it is I have this, uh, it's a cheapo vice, and I got it from, I believe Lowe's, it might have been Home Depot, can't remember. It was only two dollars or four three dollars it was something very inexpensive it's not great but it's good enough gives me a second set of hands so i wrap the stone in a piece of uh, paper and that i've uh, wetted down with water to keep it cool keep the stone cool and you just have to make sure that you've got the side that you want to remove in the vice right or you'll be removing the wrong side which would make you go back and redo it so then it's simply hooking it into the vice then I just tighten the vice up so the stones nice and snug get my needle nose pliers and my uh, flame uh, I'm using a blazer it's working okay it had been giving me trouble it hadn't been holding the uh, the butane uh, for a while but recently it's been holding the butane fine so I just uh, hit the flame and heat the dock and it comes right off I dropped it but normally I don't drop it so the old dock is removed stone is still cool and now I can work on the upper half of the stone. So most of our adhesive uh, is on the old dop. So I just drop it in my uh, acetone jar, let it soak until I, I've got a few dops in there now. So in the near future, I'll fish all these dops out, clean them off with uh, Brasso and uh, denatured alcohol, make them look shiny and new and nice and clean and put them back to use. And I use uh, Brasso to, to clean my dops. And for safety message, just in case somebody would need it, the dop that I put in the acetone, it's already cooled before I drop it in acetone. Do not drop a red hot dop into your acetone. Acetone's flammable, very flammable. So um, I had used, I had tried a tarnish remover uh, to clean my dops, dops up, dop sticks up, but it doesn't work as good. It, it makes them nice and shiny real quick, but it kind of puts a coating on your on your dop. So the good old Brasso, been around forever. Uh, you need some elbow grease, but that's what I use to clean my dops. Okay, and usually I'm looking uh, instead of at the camera, I've got my loop, and I'm looking through my loop at the stone when I set it in. Uh, the spindle and to get an alignment we want either the 48 tooth or the 96 tooth and at night a 90 degree angle when you raise your stone you'll see it break the plane of this precision flat piece of metal which comes with your Altatech and you put that on your flattest lap in my case my uh, ceramic lap I actually put it on another uh, precision cut block that gives me an extra two two inches of height so that my head's not down too low to see what's going on and when you're when it's breaking the plane at the same time 
you're in alignment. So if you were slightly out of alignment, you would see it breaking the plane on this side before that side. You see how it's got the little gap there? If you were to set your stone and tighten up that dot retention screw and start cutting, your facets would not be in alignment. Your girdle would be uh, slightly messed up. Okay, I've pre-polished our spinel. So now I'm going to polish uh, the crown with uh, 60,000 grit diamond on a bat lap. And then I'll still have to cut the, and polish the table, but everything else will be polished. So go ahead and uh, move on to my 60,000 grit diamond on a bat lap. I finished polishing the upper half of our spinel. So now I will uh, transfer the stone into my 45 degree tabling adapter and cut the table and polish it. Okay, the uh, table polished right up with 60,000 grit uh, diamond on a uh, zinc lap. So now I'll soak our stone in the acetone and remove it from the dop and then we'll weigh it, measure it, and send it off to Bopi. Today I cut a large piece of man-made red spinel into the awesome spellbound design. I would have never have been able to find or afford this size of a piece of natural red spinel which is why I chose to cut lab-created red spinel today. It's easy to see how spinel is the gemstone which made Ruby famous, and although spinel is currently an underpriced gemstone because it remains largely unknown by consumers, the price continues to climb. Uh, please let me know in the comments what you think of this design and of red spinel. And as always, happy fasting everyone.